أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي ليس لأوليته ابتداء ولا لأزليته انقضاء وانحصرت الأوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أب القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرتس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بينه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولولاه لصاخت الأرض بأهلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من من أخلص لله أربعين صباحا جرت ينابيع الحكمة من قلبه على لسانه صلوات We were discussing in the previous lesser lecture about the fact that how the concept of Iman is divided and distributed to various parts of the human body and various parts of the human body have have a share of Iman and we discussed uh, about a little bit about the share that the uh, human hands have about Iman and the share that the human feet have towards the Iman and the share that the human ears have towards the Iman and the share that the human eyes and the share that the human tongue has and last of all that we did not discuss yet was the share that the human soul and the heart the Qalb has which is the largest share and that's where the home of Iman is Probably we may end up talking about the share of Qalb in the next Thursday inshallah because there are a little bit of certain things remaining to discuss. We were talking about how uh, Islam has provided a comprehensive moral values, values, values based system to improve the life of the human kind. We talked about, um, and most of these things are either related to the tongue or related to our, mm, you know, our practical behaviors, which you can say related to our hands and feet. And obviously, when we walk around and we do our fara'il and duties, then it will naturally engage the hand, the feet, the eyes, the ears, and the tongue all together. So we talked about Al-Ifsha Bissalam, how Islam is asking us to expressly, expressly say the Salam, regardless whomsoever, whether it's an elderly person or a middle-aged person or a child, we should expressly say the Salam. This is a sign of Tawadu and modesty. We talked about Al-Widad Ma'annas, means doing Mudarat and good 
loving, amicable behavior with the people so we don't repel the people away from us. And we talked about al-islah, islah wa zatil bayn, that means uh, rooting out the differences between two movements, not just uh, addressing the matter from the surface. And uh, what is remaining is just a, a few more moral, obviously the moral teachings are a lot. I'm just talking about some of the very important ones. Uh, uh, respect of the akabir, respect of the elderly people in Islam. We have uh, the hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Where he says, "Laysa minna man lam yuqtir kabirana, wa lam yarham sahirana." This is from Majmua, Majmua wa Ram, and also from Al Wasail al Shia. That means our sixth Imam says that someone who does not respect uh, our elders and doesn't have mercy on our young, our youth, is not one of us. Is not amongst us. So basically, basically, these kinds of statements, laysa minna, not amongst us, proves the fact that we are not entitled to be called the true Shias and followers of Ahlul Bayt if these uh, traits and attributes are not found in the soul. So respect of the elders. Our elders, we need to consider elders like our father and mother. So regardless of who the elder is, if there is an elderly person, and some of the ahadith, in the light of the ahadith, we learn that a, a sheikh, an elderly person, the word sheikh in Arabic has several meanings. One of the meanings is an elderly person. A sheikh person in the society is like a prophet sent to a town by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the kind of respect Allah holds for an elderly person who is obviously pious and practicing the sharia. And uh, uh, obviously the beard which gets white and turns gray in the obedience and ita'at of Allah has a lot of respect. So we need to give respect to the elderly people of our society. And uh, nasihat, another significant moral value in Islamic moral system is nasihat, advice. Uh, we need advices in all stages of our life, uh, regardless of who we are. Um, you know, we, uh, regardless of what level of maqamat or or ahwal nafs or level of, there's a difference in ilm al akhlaq between maqam and hal. Maqamat and ahwal of the nafs. So maqamat are God-gifted levels to those who are doing tazkiyat al-nafs and asar wa suluk Allah. Allah avoids certain levels to certain, uh, you know, people who are striving uh, and doing jihad uh, against their desires on his path. Whereas ahwal are levels which we acquire with our efforts. So there's a difference between maqamat and ahwal. So whatever maqam of nafs you may reach in the stages of tazkiyah, and whatever hal and uh, level and ahwal and conditions of the, and situations of the soul that you may have in your stage, uh, you, we always stand in need of nasihat. And um, obviously, uh, because of the fact that we are jahil, because of the fact that we know very less, and because of the fact that the unknowns are more than the knowns. You know, majhulat are way more than the ma'lumat and ma'kulat that we have. And not just that, but even if we have the, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, majhul and unknown is converted into ma'loom and ma'kul for us, intelligible, and known reality, still there is a room of practicing it correctly or not practicing it correctly. So hikmatun ilmiya, the intellectual wisdom is found for so many. But the hikmatun amaliya, the practical wisdom is nadir on the planet of earth. 
nadar nudratan really you will find mu'mineen who have hikmatun amaliyah so what uh, what we require for our um, you know for our uh, you know high levels with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our success is not just hikmatun ilmiyah which is not a guarantee for our success but what we require is hikmatun amaliyah in order to increase in our amal we require nasihat so there were lots and lots of scholars there are today lots and lots of scholars but uh, you know, not every alim has hikmatun nazariyah so that's why every alim cannot serve as a hadi and guide for the for the islamic ummah only those who can serve as a hadi and guide to the islamic ummah who in addition to hikmatun nazariyah intellectual wisdom they also have the practical wisdom which is the, what is required for our success so imam sadiq alayhi salam says and that's narrated in that's narrated in rawatul muttaqin ahabbu ikhwani ilayya man ahab man ahda ilayya ayubi the most beloved of my uh, brothers is the one who gifted to me my faults my defects so and all sadiq alayhi salam doesn't have any faults and then right there he's masoom that's the way they are teaching us our scholars say uh, that uh, you know uh, uh, these kinds of uh, teachings are uh, you know uh, like you find in the du'as of the prophet in ahlul bayt they are mentioning about their sins and seeking tawbah and istighfar from towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't have any sins our scholars say that these du'as of ahlul bayt are uh, you know ta'limiyah uh, that means they are teaching us the sinners the etiquettes and other how to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here again uh, in the hadith he says ahabbu ikhwani ilayya so first of all we find that uh, the person who is doing nasihat towards you lillah for the sake of Allah has to be beloved in your eyes don't hate the person don't dislike the person you need to consider him as mahboob Imam Sadi Islam says ahabbu ikhwani ilayya the most beloved of all the brothers of mine is the one who gives nasihat to me who gifts the nasihat to me the next point is that he uses the word ahda this is from hadiyya and gifting the nasihat you know when you go to a birthday party or any other uh, you know positive celebration of a mu'min and you carry a gift for that person do you just throw it on his face like that no you buy a nice possibly a wrapper a paper gift paper gift card isn't right gift box you know right in a presentable way in a nice uh, carrying bag isn't it right so you can gift it in a nice and respectful and honorable way isn't it right so this is how we do the gifts that's how we gift each other we don't just throw the gift in a way or mention it on his face in a way that he gets repelled so ahda ilayya nasihat when we are doing if we do it in a bad way it is basically uh, in a lot of times counterproductive so that we are not doing the job then and also um, in another hadith uh, and from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he says that ma ahda al muslim li akhihi hadiyatan afdal min kalimat kalimat hikmatin tazid huda aw taruddu an rada there is no muslim giving a gift to his brother uh, superior than a word of wisdom so the best gift a, a, a mu'min can give a muslim can give to his brother is a word of wisdom kalimat hikma that's how he can cause increase in his guidance and watarudduhu an rada and he can basically stop him from uh, downfall and descent so this is about uh, this is a little bit about nasihat and then we have iyadatul marwa another very significant component of islamic moral value system is paying a visit to the sick when we discover that somebody some mu'min is marid and sick we pay a visit 
if you cannot pay, you can call them, you can send email to them, isn't it right? At least we, we, we make sure that we inquire uh, the, about the health of a person. Paying visit itself has a lot, a lot of reward. Uh, and the hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam he says from in Fasail al-Shia man aada maridan shayyahu sab'una alf o malak whoever pays a visit to a marid a sick person 70,000 angels accompany him shayyahu sab'una alf o malak yastaghfiruna lahu these angels are not just walking with you for nothing they are doing istighfar for you hatta yarja'a ila manzilihi until this person returns back to his house so 70,000 angels are going with you it's a very important event taking place 70,000 angels are accompanying you and they are constantly doing 70,000 masoom infallible individuals are doing istighfar for you so we get our sins forgiven isn't it right and Aid al Marib Yahudo Firrahma is a jealousa is Irtamasa fiha. The person who pays a visit to a sick person, he is uh, in the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sits. That's how that's why we when we go and pay a visit, we should sit down uh, next to the Marib's person, not just standing and then walk away as and try to look at your watch and know uh, I have a meeting to attend, so I just run away as soon as I can. No. Try to spare some time out because this is a very important event. And sit next to the Marius person. He feels comfortable that you are spending some time with him. Because if you sit, Rasulullah says, Ida jalasa irtamasa fiha. When you sit, when this person sits, he is drowned and he immerses himself in the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is about Ayadat al Marwa. So much needs to be said. That's you know a very elaborate subject I'm just touching on some of the most important moral values here um, Silatul Rahim uh, paying visit staying in touch staying in contact staying intact with the Zawil Arham and relatives Zawil Arham is a very elaborate concept of Islam your in-laws and your personal relations your blood relations they are all part of Shara'an your in-laws and your personal relatives, they are all part of the Zawil Arham. So you cannot say, they are, they are my in-laws, so this, this, that's not my blood relationship. This, this is your take on Islam. Islam doesn't distinguish that kind, doesn't put that kind of line. When you enter into a marriage relationship, then your in-laws and your blood relatives, they are all your Zawil Arham. So Imam al-Baqir salam says Silatul Rahim Silatul Rahim Tuzakki al-A'mal Wa tunni al-Amwal Wa tadfa'u al-Balwa Wa tuyassiru al-Hisab Wa tunsi al-Ajal That's in Al-Kafi So Silatul Rahim Staying in touch with your relatives and With the relatives That's in other words It's causes your amal and actions to be purified your actions need to be our actions need to be purified to be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become maqbool and accepted in Allah's eyes isn't it right we need tasqiyatul amal so how can we make sure this amal is purified enough to be presentable in, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepted one of the reasons for that is salatul rahim wa tunni al amwal uh, and uh, it gives uh, increase. Tunmi is from numu. In Arabic it means growth. Increase. It, it causes increase your money. Those are the people who don't have uh, jobs. Those are the people who uh, don't have nicely paid jobs where they cannot you know, break even their uh, legitimate expenses. One of the one of the very effective ways of increasing, confirmed increase in your money and sustenance is paying a visit to your relatives. Go and pay a visit to your relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase in your mal. Watunni al amwal. Watadfa'ul balwa. It repels and re it rejects away the, the turmoils and, uh, and uh, calamities that we face. 
or to yassir al hisab in other words and it it makes the hisab and accountability in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy for us if we have if we stay in touch with our relatives our hisab is easy in the eyes of allah um, sometimes we live far away on far away corners and countries and cities of the world that we may not have time to practically and physically pay a visit to all our relatives it is understandable even in the old times not everybody could travel on a camel or on a donkey or a mule far away from Medina to all the way to you know Tashkent for example not everybody can travel isn't it right but at least we have the uh, niyat whenever we get a chance whenever we get a chance of staying in touch we will do all what is in our reach to pay a visit to meet with them to say salam to them to inquire to help them to provide our help to basically stay in touch you know uh, the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that silu arhamakum walau bis salam stay in touch with your relatives although it is with a salam once in a while we can call them assalamu alaikum how are you how are you? this is also part of the salatul rahim but the urful uqala should not say that you have no relation to this relative that like it never happens that you call or you email or you are in touch you have you had the opportunity to be in touch but you ignored this is what the urf will call that you are you know breaking away from your relatives because all the masadiq all the titles of the sharia are applied according to the application in itlaq al-itlaqat al-urfi how the urf takes it so to yassir al-hisab silat al-rahim helps makes your hisab and accountability uh, easy uh, and tunsi al-ajal it makes the death uh, basically to forget the debt so basically what we learn in the light of this hadith you will certainly and uh, as a confirmed matter you will have length and increase in your age if you are in touch with your relatives certainly certainly your age will increase kifalatul uh, aitam another very important part of the value system of Islam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that's in tafsir tafsir nur al-saqalain volume 5 ana wa kafir al-kafir al-yatim ka hatain fi al-jannah idha taqallah azza wa jal wa ashara bis-sababati wal-wasta prophet uh, pointed with his middle finger and uh, the index finger bring those two close to each other and prophet said me and the caretaker of one orphan will be like this in the paradise that means you will be that close to rasulullah in the paradise uh, if you have taqwa uh, so this is the reward of, a, of somebody who takes care of one orphan in his life and then imam al-baqir al-islam has said wasail al-shia that man ankara minkum qasawata qalbihi some people have qasawat al-qalb isn't it right? When we um, do a lot of sins, God forbid, it happens that we become immune to the harams. So when we become immune to the harams, this is called shaqawatul qalb in ilm al-akhlaq. A person is now stone-hearted because he doesn't even feel bad on what he did. Not feeling bad on what he did because it's normal. It's okay. What's wrong? If I am you know uh, doing a haram so what's wrong a whole bunch of other people are doing the same what happened to them the same regular satanic deception process so a person who feels normal after doing the sin doesn't repent doesn't feel bad doesn't condemn him or his own behavior doesn't turn back to the straight path because sin we do it in uh, when we get off the Sarat al-Mustaqeem we can never do the sin as long as we are following the Sarat al-Mustaqeem on the Sarat al-Mustaqeem there is no sin Sarat al-Mustaqeem is the path of Noor if you cannot have Vulmat and Noor so that's a very basic thing when we do the sin we are off the track we are not on Sarat al-Mustaqeem we are 
basically and everything else is Jahannam because Sirat al Mustaqim is, is a straight path which is walking either through the fire or over the hellfire. So basically, uh, feeling normal without Tawbah, without feeling the need of Nadamat and repentance, Amir Mumi al Islam has said, Adnadmu Tawbatun. If you know, Nadamat and repentance is Tawbah. So if we have the real nadamat and repentance in the qalb, it will always force us to do the proper tawbah with its all, uh, you know, seven uh, ways and conditions. So uh, becoming normal and immune after sin makes a person shakil qalb, stone-hearted or worse. And then if we still continue the wrong path and do not do the tawbah, after a while a stage arrives that the person becomes Qasiyyul Qalb You know um, I, I, I'm sorry I reverse the thing uh, First a person becomes Qasiyyul Qalb And then after a while A stage arrives When a person becomes Shaqiyyul Qalb So Shaqawatul Qalb Is a stage Which is Point of no return If a person reaches The level of Shaqawatul Qalb He cannot Return back From that stage So Qasawatul Qalb Is ahead Of Shaqawatul Qalb So Qasawat Is a big red flag in Islamic morality, when a person feels this qasawatul qalb, man ankara minkum qasawata qalbihi, whoever realizes that I'm wrong, I'm doing wrong, there's wrong in me, I have qasawat of the qalb. You know, like another hadith where Imam Salih has said that, uh, uh, you know, ma jaffat al dumu illa li qaswatil qulub. This, the uh, tears don't dry up except because of the qaswatul qalb. People, some people are qasiyul qalb. That's why they don't end up crying. So, wama uh, qasatul qulub illa li kasratil zunub. And the eyes and the qulub don't become qasi except because of abundance of sins. So, abundance of sins cause a person to become qasiyul qalb. So, if we realize that we are wrong. When we become Qasul Qalb, we haven't become Shaqiyul Qalb yet, God forbid, which is the point of no return. But in, in Qasul Qalb, which is because of abundance of sins, then what, what is the recipe now? How should we, where should we go from here? What's the solution? Look at the solution that Imam al Baqir is giving in Wasail al Shia. Man ankara minkum qasawata qalbihi fal yudne yatiman. He should get close to a yatim child. فَالْيُلَاطِفْهُ وَالْيَمْسَحْ يَدَهُ بِرَأْسَهُ He should do lutf. That means merciful behavior towards the child. Get close to a yatim child, an orphan child. Do a lutf and merciful behavior towards the yatim child. وَالْيَمْسَحْ رَأْسَهُ He should rub his head, the head of the yatim child. His heart will become soft with the izn and permission of Allah. So the qasawat of the qalb will go away if you visit a yatim person and show your mercy towards a yatim child and you rub your hand over the head of a yatim child. It's extremely, extremely emphasized mustahab thing in Islam that we mashu ra'sil yatim, rubbing the hand. Every hair which passes under your hand Allah gives one hasana for you and construct a palace, constructs a palace for you. Another um, hadith from Rasulullah says that Ya Ali, man kafa yatiman fi nafaqatihi bi maalihi hatta yastaghniya wajibat lahu al jannatu al battata. That means Prophet said to Muhammad Islam, whoever takes care, sponsors, takes care of one orphan, in fi nafaqatihi, that means he the other expenses of an orphan. You take care of all the expenses of one orphan. Hatta yastaghniya, so then he ends up in a situation he doesn't stand in need of any further help. So you take care of his expenses, basically. Uh, Jannat is wajib for that person, certainly. And last hadith before I move forward on that subject, the last hadith from Amir Mumni alayhi salam, where he says that. Uh, where he says, "Ahsinu fi aqabi aqabi ghairikum, tuhsinu fi aqabikum." You do good towards the lineage of others, 
and a, a, you know, good will be done towards your lineage. So if I die today and you know, I have my children and I want my children to be taken care of, then the best protection for my children is that I take care of the children of others. Allah will make sure from His own ways, from the ghaib, that my children are taken care of. Next point of Islamic morality is about al-af, forgiving. We have two things in Islamic morality, al-af and as-saf. Uh, you know, uh, so we need to forgive and saf, concept of saf, uh, saad and fa and ha. That's superior than al-af. Al-af means somebody comes and seeks forgiveness from you and you forgive the person. Whereas safh means you don't even uh, ask somebody or wait for somebody to come and seek forgiveness from you. You forgive him from far away, you know. Without him coming to you and begging you for forgiveness, you are so high in your morality that you can just forgive him without him asking you. So these are both the sifat of a mu'min. Let's uh, see what Imam Sadiq is saying about al af forgiveness qala rasulullah he says qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi alaykum bil afwa fa inna al afwa la yazid al abda illa izzan have forgiveness that means uh, have this attribute that you forgive because forgiveness doesn't increase in a servant except izzat we will increase in dignity and honor everybody loves to be honored in the society but there are reasons Allah has provided asbab for certain things. Because He is running the universe with the sabab and musabab, cause and effect theory. We have to do and ahkam and shari'ah are ilalun taqweeniya. That's how we believe. Isn't that right? Our entire sharia has taqweeni asarun taqweeniya. Just like a poison kills. This is asarun taqweeni. Just like, so you fast and you get this impact. You pray and you get this impact. You give sadaqah and you get this impact. It's an inbuilt, irreversible impact of everything that you do in the sharia. Asar and taqmini are irreversible. Isn't that right? In addition to asar and sharia, the ahkam of sharia also has asar and taqmini. If, um, so, so we find, that's why we find our salat will become, uh, you know, tajassu, uh, we believe in tamassil and tajassu al we will see the salat in the surah al nuraniya in the qabr, isn't it right? Because that's the asar and takmini of the salat, apart from the asar and shari, which is the reward and jannat. We see the surah al nuraniya for psalm, for fasting, a nurani face inside the qabr for all the fastings that we did. We see the surah al nuraniya for the sadaqat, for the help we provide to the movement brothers. So these are all asar and takminiya for the amal. So these asar is what the Prophet used to see, these asar, isn't it right? He cannot tolerate the sins. Then, Inna vuhurakum. Didn't Rasulullah say, Inna vuhurakum saqeelatum? Your backs are burdened with your sins. Fakhafu anha betule sujudikum. So, Prophet was seeing the burdens of all the sins in the back. And just like a person is walking, like, you know, lots of big load he's carrying over his back. So, the, every sin is increasing the, the zulmani dark burden on the back of the person and all these sins will be you know appearing in the form of aghlal uh, and salasil is al aghlal fi anaqihim was salasil so yushabun so these aghlal and salasil you know uh, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says in his dua uh, you know that uh, obviously uh, at the time of uh, the death you know, وَصَارَتِ الْأَعْمَالُ أَغْلَالًا فِي الْأَعْنَاقِ That means the actions, at the time of death, what happens, all the actions are now converted in the form of chains, hanging in the neck. Now the person cannot even raise his, his chin, his head up. Because now all the sins that he did, you find the أَسَارُ الْتَكْمِنِيَ Now there in the form of chains, uh, burdening you. So basically, we need izzat, 
everybody needs izzat and dignity and we have to have have to do certain things to get the izzat one of the things is forgiving others so then he says fata'afu yu'azzukum Allah you have uh, you forgive uh, each other Allah will in other words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is give, going to give izzat to you obviously let's not misinterpret the teachings uh, forgiving those who are your enemies and my enemies if somebody misbehaves towards me I should try my best I have a right in Islam you have a right in Islam to reciprocally do exactly the same what the person did but then you are not high in your morals if you do so. So if we do reciprocally exactly the same what the person did, nothing more than that, and then if we do more then we will be valim. But if we do exactly reciprocally, we do exactly the same, he said this to me, I said the same to him. Then I'm not high in my morality. Obviously the person who al Badi Ahlam, the person who starts is more of an oppressor. But this person who reciprocally replies back is also not high in his morality. But uh, if we forgive, then basically we get higher. But then we are talking about forgiving people who are our enemies. We are not talking about forgiving people who are the enemies of Rasul and Ahlul Bayt. Let's not mix up the Islamic concepts of forgiveness. We don't have the right to forgive anybody who disrespects Rasulullah or Ahlul Bayt. They have the right if they were present here. We don't have the right to forgive on behalf of the Prophet. Even the Mushtahid doesn't have the right to forgive the insulter of Rasulullah or Ahlul Bayt on the behalf of Rasulullah. No Mushtahid has the niyabat and proxy of forgiving people in the niyabat of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt. This niyabat is not given. If the Prophet is here, he can forgive if he wants. He is not here. Our job is to justice needs to be served. So let's not mix up the concept of forgiveness. We are talking about for, being, forgiving people who are doing bad to me and you. Not towards the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikram al jar respecting the neighbor. There is hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam where he, where he says Man aza jarahu harram allahu alayhi rihal jannah. Whoever tortures his uh, neighbor, Allah makes the smell of paradise haram on him. But it's not mentioned in this hadith, but in other hadith informs us that, uh, um, uh, um, that the, re- the smell of paradise reaches from the uh, masirat khams, the, from the path, from the travel of 500 years of travel. How much can you travel for, for, if you keep on traveling for 500 years, how far can you go? The travel of 500 years of travel, that's the stretch, that's the extension where the smell of paradise reaches. So you can imagine how far a person will be away from the rahmat of Allah on the day of judgment because he is away from the rahmat of Allah here. Didn't we just discuss minutes ago that all the akam of Sharia have asarun taqwiniyya, just like poison kills? So this exactly because he did something here, that's why he would be like that there. So whoever pe- tortures his uh, neighbor, there is no distinction between who the neighbor is, even though he may be a kafir. Uh, you know, uh, 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 there are three things. Salasun lam yaj'alullah fi hinna. Rukhsatan. Three things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not provide any, any leave for a person. So you, nobody is exempt. You know, al-birru bil walidain. In doing good and dutiful behavior towards the parents. Barrayni kana aw fajirain. Whether the parents are good doer, good doing parents or fajir, uh, parents who are doing harams. Regardless of that, you have to do good behavior and beautiful behavior towards the parents. And, uh, uh, um, and uh, you know, ikramul uh, ja, you know, doing good, be respecting your neighbor, doing nice behavior, respectful behavior towards your neighbor, uh, whether he's a good doing person or a bad doing person, a mu'min or kafir, it doesn't matter. So in all the cases, uh, we do good behavior towards the neighbor.
so man aga jarahu haram Allahu alayhi riha al-jannah wa ma'awahu jahannam his place of refuge is jahannam wa bi'is al-masih what a bad place to end up with wa man laya'a haqqa jarihi falaysa minna and then Prophet said whoever wastes the right of his neighbor is not one of us not one of us means he's not a not entitled to be called a Muslim. And ikramu karim al qawm respect another value of Islam is respecting the respectable person of every nation. Whenever you find a person is respectable in his own nation, one person comes from the Buddhist community. Let's suppose the Buddhist community respects him. We will respect him. Isn't that right? If one person comes from the Jewish community, one person comes from the Hindu community, he is respectable in his own community, we will respect him. So the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Kafi, volume 2. He says that, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ كَرِيمَ قَوْمٍ فَأَكْرِمُوهُ When a respectable person of a nation comes to you, respect him. So, Jalus, sitting with the people in a gathering. The Prophet says, لا تجلسوا بين إثنين إلا بإذنهما Don't sit between two people except with their permission. When you find two people are sitting and talking to each other, they may be talking about a private subject. This is a basic Islamic morality. We don't disturb the people in their private talk. Abu Zar, rahmatullahi alayhi, saw that Prophet was sitting and Dihyat al-Kalbi, who was one of the Ashab of Rasulullah, was sitting also. So he, came, he was coming towards the Prophet, and he saw that Dihyat al-Kalbi is sitting, so he turned away and walked away. And the Hadith says that it was, the Riwayat says that it was Jibreel who came in the form of Dihyat al-Kalbi. And Jibreel said to the Prophet, uh, which I'm paraphrasing in my own words, that uh, uh, Abu Zar, uh, you know, should have come and talk, uh, you know, come here so we would say salam to him. Obviously, Abu Zar didn't come because he didn't want to disturb Rasulullah. It's part of the basic ethics in you said so you find some people, some two people are talking, you don't disturb them. And that's where, remember that famous uh, dua of Abu Zar, that in that narration, Jibreel narrated that dua to Rasulullah. That the, the dua of Abu Zar is recited by some of the angels in the sama, in the heaven. You know, Allahum, Allahum, I ask you the faith in you, and the trust in the Prophet, and the forgiveness from all evil, and the وَالْغِنَى عَنْ شِرَارِ النَّاسِ That was the dua of Abu Zar that Jibreel mentioned in front of Rasulullah at that time. So we don't sit and disturb the people in their private talk. تَعْزِيَةُ musab. Another value, an Islamic moral value system, if you find somebody who is affected by a calamity, a trouble, a problem, a sorrow, a pain, a hardship, somebody died in his family, Whatever musibat has struck that person, we do the ta'ziyat to a fellow mu'min brother. Man azza musaban kana lahu mislu ajrihi min ghayri an yantaqisa min ajri al-musabi shay'an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that whoever, um, you know, uh, performs a ta'ziyat, you know, uh, condolences, uh, to a person who is affected, he will get the same reward as this person. For every musibat, we get the reward. Isn't that right? In Islam, if a mu'min is, uh, is subjected to masaib, it's all rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-bala'u lil mu'mini imtihan wa lil kafiru adab wa lil anbiya'u daraja. When bala comes, it's an imtihan for a mu'min, for a kafir, it's azab, for anbiya, it's the means of raf'ud darajat, elevation of their levels. So, um, if one night a person does not sleep from the pain, one year of his sins are forgiven. If you could not sleep for one night out of your pain, one year of your sins are forgiven. You find some of the very nice people, before their death, uh, before the time of Sakaratul Maut, taking of the soul 
out of the body comes. They are in extreme pain. This is not the sign that this person is a bad person. You know, some of our very great, great personalities were in a lot of pain at the time of death. And some of the very bad people have vahir and apparently very easy death. So none of those two are signs for us to say that this person is now a bad, good person and that person is a bad person. We can't say that. We learn in the light of the hadith that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a mu'min person, He gives him musibat at the time of before the death so he get cleaned up from a little bit something that he may have in his book of deeds. He gets cleaned up so he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a sin. And some of the bad doers who may have done some good, Allah makes their death times easier for them. So their death serves as the reward of their good deeds in this dunya. So when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have nothing good to declare and get the reward. So we need to do the ta'ziyat of Qusab. Insaf. Doing just for behavior towards all the people. Amir Mu'mir alayhi salam says that be pleased for the people what you are pleased uh, with them uh, for yourself uh, you would be a Muslim so this is a basic Islamic uh, moral value that we always you know, keep in mind that we need to love for others. We should be pleased for others with things that we are pleased for ourselves. So, giving away the used up uh, clothes to people or the broken chairs and sofas to the Islamic center or broken chairs to the Sunday school or unusable items to a masjid is not the Saratun Mustaqeem in Islam. Saratun Mustaqeem is that we give things that we want for ourselves. So what we like for ourselves, that's the same thing we like for every other person. This is such a great Islamic moral value that it will relieve us from a lot of, uh, of wrongs in our life. If we uh, you know, doing ghibat, hasad, namima, you know, all so many things, tohmat. Before, if we, if we, before slander and tohmat, if I think that, do I like the same for myself? If somebody was doing that kind of talk against me, if I think like this, obviously my lifestyle will change forever. So, this is such a beautiful moral value that has very wide impact on our spirituality. Ya Ali ma karehtahu li nafsika fakrahu li ghayrika Prophet said to Muhammad alayhi salam what you dislike for yourself O Ali what you dislike for yourself dislike it for others in other words wama ahbabtahu li nafsika fa ahibbahu li akhika what you love for yourself love it for your brother takun adalan so that's how you will become Adil. So if I like something else for my son, something else for myself, something else and something else for the other person's son, that means I'm not Adil. This is not the way, this is not the justice. So I do the same behavior towards others how I want to do for them. Uh, then you will be Adil in your hukm and muqsatan fi adlika you will be doing pissed in your adl muhibban fi ahl sama you will be uh, you know um, you will be um, among the ahl sama a muhib person and maududan fi sudur ahl al and uh, you will be a beloved person in the hearts of the dwellers of earth ihfaz wasiyati inshallah protect my advice inshallah then the last thing which I would mention before we come to the end inshallah tonight is الرحم, uh, الرحم that means having mercy on the people 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever doesn't have mercy on the people, Allah doesn't have mercy on him. Man la yarhamu nasa, la yarhamu Allah. So, another hadith from Ibn Muni alayhi wa sallam says, Ajibtu liman yarju rahmatan min fawtuhi, kayfa la yarham man dunahu. I am surprised somebody who is hoping to get rahmat and mercy from the top, from his top, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words, uh, how, why doesn't he have rahmat on those who are uh, lower than him? That means our subordinates. How we behave towards our subordinates or those who are under us, so that's how we will get the mercy from Allah in other words. And uh, yeah, so yeah. yeah, probably we are at the end, yeah. So inshallah we'll continue. This is just a little bit remaining and then finally inshallah uh, we will come to the most important aspect of Iman which is about the Waj and Qalb. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. If you have any question about uh, related to the speech, we have a couple of minutes for that.